Good morning, Bedford High students and families. I'm Chris Thompson, principal of Bedford High School, standing alongside our Bedford High administration team. Um, I will be working with our junior students this year at Bedford High School. Good morning, I'm Mrs. Robinson. I am <clears throat> the Associate Principal of Academic Affairs and I am the principal for seniors this year. Yay. Good morning, I'm Ms. Lewis. I am an Assistant Principal for 10th graders. I am located in the South Office. Good morning to you all and welcome to the school year. Good morning, I'm Mr. Harrison. I am the 9th grade Assistant Principal this year and my office will be located in the North Office. So as we begin to start our school year, we will be learning remotely and we have decided that we'll be doing a series of videos for students and parents. Um, today's video will talk about our remote expectations for the 2020 school year. We'll cover uh, quite a few different things uh, here this morning. Just to introduce you to your counselors, um, if you are a senior, you will have Mr. Dressman. 11th graders will have Mrs. Paul. If you are in the 10th grade with me, you will have Mrs. Graham. And if you are a 9th grader with Mr. Harrison, you will have Mrs. Henderson. Students, this year is going to be a lot different as Mr. Thompson already said. Um, so there will be some expectations for your remote learning. Um, we expect that you are on time every day, okay? Attendance will be taken every day, every period. Um, you need to be accounted for. So first period class, if it starts promptly at 745, you are expected to be there. We expect that you are prepared, have everything you need for that day, um, and, and do your best. With remote learning, we will be sharing a list of expectations uh, for students that all classrooms will be doing. Um, this talks about the presentation, so making sure that you are in a uh, area uh, that you are properly dressed. Like Ms. Lewis said, your computer and all your materials are set and ready to go for the day. Uh, we want to make sure that you guys are participating. Uh, just because we are remote does not mean there is no participation. Um, again, teachers uh, are expecting that. We are expecting that you participate. Um, lastly, if you are not talking, uh, we ask that you mute yourself um, so that others can be heard. And with that, making sure that you're respecting your teachers and your classmates. Uh, students, I want to add there with the participation, we understand that this is new territory for a lot of us and we understand that some aren't as comfortable on the computer or with virtual learning as others. Um, that's why we strongly encourage participation because the, the more active you are in your own learning and, and the more you participate, the, the, more, the easier it will come to you. So again, we understand that, that some will not be as comfortable as others, but please be active in your own learning, participate, and do everything in your ability um, to learn the content and, and always never be afraid to ask questions of, of your teacher. We ask, students, we ask that you, we realize that you are at home and this is remote learning, but we want you to chat responsibly. responsibly. Um, that means hold your conversations to a minimum. Uh, you might be at home with other siblings. Uh, remember to mute yourself if you need to. Uh, we understand that you might have to help a sibling here and there, or you might have to quickly run to the restroom, uh, but make sure that you're being respectful in all the words that you're using while you're on your remote hangout. Um, and like I said, make sure that you are muting when you need to mute and uh, keeping your chats to a minimum during your lessons. Students, you know, as an administrative team, we always talk to you about advocating for yourself. That, that's, that's huge in your life as you come into young adulthood. But more importantly now, while you are remote learning and you're not sitting in front of your teacher directly and things are going to happen in your environments. We understand that there will be some challenges, like Mrs. Robinson already said. We know you have siblings. We know sometimes you might be in an environment that's not as quiet. Um, there may be things that go on. We are asking that you advocate for yourselves. And what that means is be proactive. If you anticipate some challenges, if you think there are going to be some disruptions throughout the day, if there's a reason that you can't log on right in the moment, you need to be communicating actively with your teachers. You need to reach out through email. You need to be adamant about a response. 
um, if you don't have one, you need to seek out your administrators, um, seek out your counselors. We are here to help you even though we are not face to face. We are reachable at all times. We are available. So please use us, but more importantly, use your voice. And again, make sure your message comes across respectfully. Um, and again, be proactive. Don't wait till the last minute. I know sometimes things occur last minute, but if you can, by all means, be proactive when you communicate with your teachers about challenges you may have. It, adding to that, um, as Ms. Lewis said, your count, or I'm sorry, your administrative team is always here. Um, if you have questions, concerns, reach out to us. Also, use your counselors. We had talked in the, the very first slide, introduced who your counselors will be. Reach out to them. If you have questions um, about the next steps or, or anything like that, or if you're having challenges um, that are not related uh, to your academics, please do not hesitate to um, shoot your counselors an email and, and, or pick up the phone and call them. Uh, we, we have a large staff here that is here to help in any way that we possibly can. Um, so do not hesitate to reach out to your administrators, your counselors, your teachers that you might have in class, or just other adults that, that you know are here um, to help support you. And just to add to that, lastly, just don't panic. We are here to help you. Someone in this building will help you. Um, I know that you want <clears throat> things immediately. For sure, you want answers. And it's a lot harder when you are in remote learning than versus when you were here in the building and you could just come and see any one of us. Um, we will make sure your needs are met as far as anything you need from the school, academically, if it is transcripts for seniors, if it is recommendation letters, whatever it is, don't panic, breathe, reach out to the proper channels, and then we most certainly will make sure we help you. And, and one last thing to add, don't forget our SEL team. You know, some of you are familiar with Ms. Langan, some of you are more familiar with Ms. Gordon. Um, by all means, please reach out to them too. Just keep lines of communication open um, so that we can assist you with whatever it is that you need. This page is meant to draw your attention. Um, now that we have your attention, you're seeing the no cell phone policy. Um, Again, that picture there is simply to draw your attention to understand how important this is. Um, we are not saying currently that you cannot have your cell phones out during instruction. But what we are saying is you need to be respectful at all times. Um, if you are using your cell phone inappropriately, those privileges will be taken away from you. Um, those privileges will be taken away if you have repeated offenses in a classroom or one flagrant misuse of your cell phone. And when we talk about that, the, the, the word respect is what should come to mind. Um, one example, as you see on the screen, pictures should not be taken of other class participants. This is not a time to snap a picture of someone else that's on your Google Classroom or, and talk about their bad hair day or talk about the shirt they're wearing. That is, just as it would be inappropriate in a classroom environment, it is inappropriate um, with online learning as well. The other thing, understand that you should always refer to the Student Code of Conduct. The Student Code of Conduct was created uh, to help our environment stay safe as well as to have some order here. And that, that doesn't just extend while you're here on our grounds or at a football game. That also extends while we're doing online um, and virtual learning. So take a look at your Code of Conduct. In particular, the bullying, the harassment, those, guide, those guidelines still remain in effect just as if you were sitting here in class. So be respectful, as Ms. Robinson had talked about earlier, be respectful of your classmates um, and, and understand that if you are not able to use your cell phones appropriately, if you misuse those cell phones, um, you will not be allowed to have them uh, on the screen. Discipline. So many of you see this and you probably think, since we're virtual, then we can't have any discipline consequences, um, which is incorrect. Um, our expectation is that everyone will come in, uh, you know, follow, follow our roar, set a great example and do the things that you guys need to do. Um, but we know that some of you won't. Um, so we will continue to, f to, to enforce our student code of conduct. Um, some points that, that we want to emphasize, and we talked about this earlier, um, making sure that when you are online that you're addressed appropriately. Uh, those same expectations as if you were here in the building apply to at home. Um, having respectful language, uh, the use of profanity and disrespect towards your peers, 
teachers or any other staff members uh, will not be tolerated. And the last one is any disruptions um, during instructional time. Um, you know, again, our goal and our ex expectation is for everyone to come in, um, follow ROAR, and do the things that, that we need to do to make sure that, that everyone is able to, to learn in their own way um, while online. Um, some steps that we will take, um, depending on the situation, it may just be a verbal warning uh, from your teacher or from one of your administrators. Uh, it may become a discipline referral, and then it also may be virtual meetings with you, uh, your parents, your administrator, and a school counselor. Um, so again, you guys have the ability to control what happens with that. Um, something else I want to add, students, with the, our points of emphasis, with the dress code, um, understand we are the dress code and the code of conduct, we are not going to be checking what shoes you're wearing or making sure you have a belt on, those types of things. What we are asking that you do and then the things that will have a consequence attached, we don't expect you to be wearing anything that has profanity on them. We don't have drugs, alcohol. Those types of things should not be visible. They should not be um, in the camera. Also, um, make sure our uh, body parts are covered up. Uh, boys, you do need to have a shirt on. Um, ladies, make sure that you're wearing appropriate tops. Um, also with dress code, and we'll kind of mention it now, that's also your background as well. Um, not just what's physically on your uh, clothing, but you should not be sitting in a, a chair and have um, drugs, alcohol, pictures, things like that, uh, or posters in plain sight. So please, you know, understand that this is a school setting, even though you might be at home um, it is a school setting, so be respectful, be mindful of those things. And lastly, I just wanted to add that although this is a different experience for you all, um, it is for our teachers as well. And so they're going to do their part to get you the instruction that you need so that you can be successful, so you need to do your part. And that is limiting the disruptions. Just as if you were in class, there's a certain way that you conduct yourself. You, you raise your hand if you want to speak. You don't speak out without being called on. So those type of things are still in place um, with this Zoom and Google Meets and things like that. They're, features that allow you to raise your hand. Your teachers will go through that. So again, just know that as you navigate this experience, our teachers are also navigating a new experience as well. Um, PBIS, we are all familiar with PBIS. Um, it does stand for Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. Um, you know that our district theme is ROAR. And I know you've heard all your administrators speak over and over again about respect. And that's what the R stands for in ROAR, okay? Respect. Respect at all times. Be open-minded. Open-minded to different things and different challenges that your classmates may be going through, as well as your teachers. Open-minded to different um, ways of thinking that some of us have. Um, achievement. Again, new territory. But we expect that you are successful and that you work towards achievement every day you're putting your best foot forward and responsibility. And again, this goes back to the advocating for yourself. You know, you need to be responsible for you. You have to get your work in. You have to properly communicate with teachers or any staff, administrators, counselors. Um, this is your time. Uh, we will also still be recognizing um, our students of the month and different things that I know you saw go on when we were on our first break of last year during the spring. Students were recognized through social media. Um, teachers were recognized through social media. So please keep looking forward to those things um, and, and, you know, have a good school year. And, and with PBIS, um, as, as Ms. Lewis said, you know, we have these expectations school-wide and we talk about school-wide at students, that, that's any staff member in this building. So we are all gonna be practicing these. Um, we're all in this together, it's new territory. Uh, so we're gonna be here to support you guys. Uh, we'll model what that looks like. Um, and, and again, you know, anything that you guys need, please seek us out, seek your counselors out, seek a teacher out, um, or seek out um, someone within the school that you have a relationship with. Okay, so one thing I wanna add too, um, which probably would come out of open-mindedness. I just want people to remember that while you're on in your classroom for remote learning, 
you know sometimes it might be appropriate a teacher might allow you to block your face but um i know sometimes we want to make sure we are hiding our face because maybe perhaps we woke up a little bit late we weren't as prepared as we wanted to be before we come on screen uh, make sure you check over those rules with your teacher Sometimes it's appropriate to have your face blocked, sometimes it is not. Sometimes teachers need to just get a span and see everyone's face the best way they can on remote learning. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and also, even though we're, we realize that you can only see on camera from the waist up, I think there was a commercial out there where someone forgot that while they were filming and were inappropriate from the waist down. And sometimes when you get up to move someplace, your whole body is in the picture on um, in your classroom. So still kind of be somewhat responsible with what you wear from the waist below. Students and parents, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch us and listen to us this morning. Uh, we hope this information was very helpful to you. Um, as we said earlier, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us, uh, your, your child's teacher, um, uh, our counselors, or any, any staff member um, that can assist you. Uh, we're in this together. This is all new for all of us. Uh, so we will support you and we got this. We will get through this and we will have a great 2021 school year here at Bedford High School. Best of luck to everyone.